Looks like we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another recreation programming session with Amista Azuzin. Uh, let's make a little bit of an announcement and officially start the stream. Write the circle live on Twitch. And what are we doing today on Twitch at television website? Today we are doing a hair programming language. Uh, that's right. So I'm going to give the link to where we're doing all that, to twitch.tv slash todding, and I'm going to ping everyone who's interested in being pinged, and there we go. The stream has officially started. The stream has officially started. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, uh, this language was on my to-do list for quite some time, right? So, I think somebody posted the link to this language in our Discord server, and uh, it's actually very interesting. Like, I liked the marketing of the language, right? So, it's a... Uh, System programming language uh, designed to be sim simple, stable, and robust. I do like simplicity, right? So, I, and I do like simple technologies. And, and I think the simpler technologies are the future, right? When the tower of uh, abstraction layers will finally topple, the simpler technologies and people who can write a simpler code will dominate the industry in a in the future maybe in the near future maybe like in 10 years or something like that but i do believe that simple technologies are the future because the tower of abstractions keep growing and growing and at some point it's going to topple we know that that at some point it's going to topple and we're going to start stripping off all of that bullshit and finally do the proper software engineering so anyway uh, right, so it uses static type systems, right? I really like static type system, manual memory management. So it's basically like C and minimal runtime. So it is well suited to, uh, for writing operating systems, uh, system tools, compilers, networking applications, and other low level high performance tasks. Uh, right, and it does look like C a little bit, right? So it does look like C, but maybe it fixes some of the problems of C, right? So, and that's exactly what I would like to maybe, uh, you know, explore today. Right, so this is something I would like to explore today. As far as I know, it's like it fits into three and a half floppy disks. So that means that the installation should be relatively straightforward, right? So they say that you should install it from your system package manager, but I, I think I didn't find it on Debian. So we're probably gonna build it from scratch. Right. And what's interesting is that it uses the like a very interesting backend for for itself like it doesn't use LLVM or anything like that it's it uses something called QBE which is something that I may actually check out on its own because it's rather interesting so it's a compiler backend that aims to provide 70% of performance of industrial optimizing compilers in 10% of the code right so one of the reasons I didn't want to use LLVM because it's a it's a such a huge bloat right so if you're writing like a very simple language, depending on LLVM is just like, it's too much. It's a fucking overkill. Seriously, it's a fucking overkill. And something like that as an alternative to LLVM sounds very, uh, very interesting, I think. It sounds very, very interesting. So it has a lot of like different features, right? So it doesn't have the, you know, the performance of like industrial optimizers like LLVM, but it's a 70%. It's a 70%. So you trade of 30% for simplicity. I, I personally take it any day. Honestly. I personally take it any day. To be fair, like um, optimizing compilers, the the role of optimizing compilers in the majority of, of applications is kind of over overrated. Honestly, I'm, I'm going to say that. The role of optimizing compilers in the majority of applications is kind of overrated. And if that was not true, Python would not become popular again, right? I do care about performance, right? I do care about performance, but at the same time, yeah, right. So we, we don't really need like a little bit, we don't need to pay such a huge price for marginal improvements, if you know what I'm talking about, right? So uh, maybe this is something that we're gonna uh, check on its own, but this is some of the things that you'll have to build as well, um, right? So, and then you need to have like a bootstrap compiler, right? So you have to bootstrap it. So I suppose it is written in itself. Uh, it's a very simplistic uh, language. It's a statically typed and it's written in itself, right? So this is actually a pretty cool project, honestly. So uh, I'm going to give the link to uh, to this thing in the chat, right? So I, I mean, bot already give it in the chat. And for people in the um, uh, on YouTube, I'm going to put it in the description, right? So here, programming language. 
uh, and this is from the previous stream I'm gonna just put a line in here so I can distinguish those things and here I'm gonna say references uh, there we go so and then uh, after we like build the bootstrap compiler we just build the original compiler all right so let's actually try to um, build the backend first right so I'm gonna actually go to uh, probe uh, and I create a, f a folder here uh, post compiler environment with the C11 compiler. I do think we have C11 compiler and I think we do have a post extended post -ex compliant environment. I do believe so. The latest version is Git master branch, not the latest version release. That's very interesting, like the latest like development, bleeding age, so to speak. Uh, right, so let's actually take the code and see what we have in here. Okay, so that was pretty straightforward. I wonder if we have to do like everything. I personally don't like to clone the entirety of the repos because sometimes they could be rather big, if you know what I'm talking about. Right, so I like to do depth one, which actually only clones like a last commit. So it's so-called shallow clone, uh, right? It is so-called shallow clone. So it's actually usually faster. Uh, and as you can see, we're done with this entire thing. Okay, so do you have a config file? Uh, uh, it doesn't have a configuration file, but it doesn't have make. So we can probably just do make right away and see how it goes. Um, and it's done actually. <laughs> so can your LLVM do that? Can your LLVM do that? I don't fucking think so. LLVM is in shambles. Mm -mm. Um, <clears throat> but so, you, know, you don't understand the enterprise clients. The enterprise client, they need overcomplicated shit. So, you don't understand. <clears throat> anyway. So um, I wonder how, so this is basically like an executable, right? Uh, I suppose it is an executable because uh, this entire thing, it has its own intermediate representation, right? So quick uh, comparison with LLVM, maybe. So I do remember, I do remember that um, there was some example. Yeah, there, there we go. It's kind of similar to LLVM intermediate language. I don't really know uh, like LLVM intermediate language. But I remember a lot of weird characters and shit like that. So, and it does feel like a LLVM, even though I don't really know LLVM. So, and I suppose you just generate this kind of thing and it just compiles it. And I suppose this thing is a compiler, uh, right? So I probably can try to do something like this, uh, right? So I don't know, don't even know uh what kind of extension do you have to put in here is there some examples no there is no any examples in here uh maybe some tests there are some tests so it's called ssa right so the extension is supposed to be ssa can we do hello ssa uh right so this is the back end and i suppose i just do qab hello ssa and it generated assembly Is it that simple? Okay, okay, that's actually <laughs> not bad, not bad. This is not hair language yet. This is its backend. And I wonder how hair language uses it. Does it just call a QBE like an external process? Maybe it does, but that's actually super cool. I really like that. So, so you just generate its intermediate representation and you just like call it and it gives you assembly and then you pass it to, I suppose, GNU assembler, right? Because this feels like a GNU assembler. And uh, yeah, that, that's basically it. Oh, and a node GNU stack. Do you guys remember this one? Do you guys remember this one? Node GNU stack. Right, it's so basically, I mean, uh, you mean that the executable is not going to be like an executable or something. Yeah, the warning. So they also automatically do that. And they also actually mark it as an empty one. I forgot the stream where we encountered that. Does anybody remember the stream where we encountered that? I think maybe BrainFuck uh, JIT. I think it was BrainFuck JIT or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a BrainFuck JIT. Uh, so yeah, so I literally guessed that you have to make it empty. So when it was right. <laughs> It's kind of interesting. Anyway, so this is the backend. Uh, okay, cool. We built it. That was easy. That was fast. So we need to take the bootstrap compiler, uh, the bootstrap compiler source code, uh, config platform. So we have to do a little bit of a copy for a specific platform. So read only. Uh, I suppose that's the thing I have to do. Hagek. 
I suppose that's how you pronounce the, the compiler for her. Uh, and let's actually do git clone, and I'm gonna also do the shallow clone, uh, depth one, right? So it says that it's a read only. Uh, okay, so we need to do the copy, they say. Uh, we need to do the copy. Mm, so, copy. Uh, config and the platform. What kind of platforms do we have? So we have Linux, NetBSD, FreeBSD, OpenBSD. So I suppose we, we do have Linux and we ju just do config.mk. So this is the configuration for the make file. Uh, right. So that is very cool. And let's actually try to build this entire thing and see how it goes. And while it is building, so uh, it's already fucking done. It's already fucking done. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to acknowledge the subs while it is building, but it's already fucking done. Um, so optionally do make check to compile and run the test suite as well as uh, then run make install as root to install to you. Nah, I don't want to do that, honestly. I don't want to do that. Uh, so then um, let's actually do check. Uh, make check. Uh, and okay, so it couldn't find QBE. Uh, and I wonder how am I supposed to even use QBE? Uh, maybe it should be available in the system, right? So essentially it should be somewhere in the path. So you know what I usually do? You know what I usually do? I usually just install extra executables uh, into user local bin. If you look at this uh, specific folder here, I have Boomer, my custom thing, Chaterina, GF2, some stuff for, stuff, stuff for editing, the Swoon, the timer that I actually put on my uh, things in here, NST. So these are executable that are not part of the system, uh, right? So I actually installed them there. Um, so, and essentially maybe I wanna do this kind of stuff in a similar manner, right? And I like to install them here because they become system-wide. Right, so they become system wide. So I know that you can install them locally, dot local and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, I like to keep them like available for several users because I have several users on this specific machine. Um, right. So let me let me see. So maybe I'm gonna go to Tmux, and I'm going to go in here. Uh, so this is QBE, and might as well maybe copy paste it. Right. So let's actually. Do the following thing. I'm gonna do copy uh, user local bin, right? User local bin, and then uh, maybe something like this. And just a second. So I'm gonna try to quickly do the sudo thing. It's not really sudo. It's just CSU. But anyway, uh, all right. So I do have QBE in the path, right? So that means we can just go to Herrick and uh, do make check, and hopefully that actually passes all of the checks. So it's it's the tests, right? It's running the tests. So that's pretty cool. Uh, that's pretty epic. Uh, I really like that. So there's a bin, uh, and I wonder, um, like, how are we supposed to use that? So it wants you to do install, right? But I don't want to install it system wide, at least right now, right? Uh, I don't want to install it system wide. So there is there is some include stuff, right? So there's some headers, but it's not really. So let's actually find this thing. And what it does is just, oh, okay. This is a single executable, literally. Does it, does it have any standard libraries or anything like that? Um, so maybe it's like a self-contained executable, right? So the only thing I see is being uh, Hyrock, Harris. Right, so that's what it is. That's what it is. So maybe I'm gonna also go ahead and just copy it system wide, uh, so I can just use it from, um, you, you know, from, from the command line. So let me quickly do that. All right. So we basically have it. Right. So we have the backend that it uses. We also yes have a uh, hair C hair C. So we are ready to basically do a hello world. Uh, right, so let's do, I don't know what's the extension for this language, by the way, uh, what's the extension? Uh, extension, uh, maybe there is no official extension, so let's take, let's take a look at the tutorial. Uh, general language introduction, table content, uh, getting, started, uh, getting started. So the extension is ha, the extension is ha. 
Okay, so we're gonna do hello ha, right? So we're gonna do hello ha, and uh, uh, so here is the hello world. So it's basically like go. You do use fmt, uh, use fmt, and then you export. Right, so you export. We don't have an extension for Emacs at all. Uh, I wonder if there is any sort of like an Emacs support for this language. Uh, that is kind of a shame that there is no... Okay, so there's scripts. Um, so we can try to maybe search for a file with the name AEL. Uh, and there's nothing. So maybe we can go on Melpa. Uh, and maybe there is something on Melpa. Uh, maybe there is something on Melpa. Mm -mm. What is special about here? Google is going to adapt it. So if you learn it right now, you can make a lot of money in five years. So you have to learn here now. Sign up for my course on here. And in five years, you're going to get a job at Google. What the fuck? So... Um, so here, right, so here, uh, I think there is no extent, it feels like there's literally no extensions for this language yet, so maybe we'll have an opportunity to make, maybe make one, um, so, <laughs> it works, it fucking works, it fucking works. I feel like I figured it out. I feel like for some reason it was not obvious for me for a very long time, but I recently figured it out. Oh, okay, so th there is a mode for for Emacs. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. Um, right. So it was not obvious for me for a long time, but I think I figured it out. Majority of people treat languages as cryptocurrencies. Like I think I figured it out. I think I nailed it. So essentially. Uh, they want to invest into a certain cryptocurrency, so then a certain company, a certain finance company can adapt it, and th then they will have a bingo, right? So that's how they treat it, which is so bizarre to me. Like, I, I could never, the reason why I could, could never understand that is that I can just learn any language, right? So, <laughs> this is like, what is investment if you can just, if you just know programming, Right. And if you know programming, you basically know all the languages, right? It's just like it, it becomes like irrelevant. And this is why it was not like really obvious for me, like why people care about languages so much, why people watch all, all of these like top 10 languages to learn in 2024. It's just like, what? why does it matter if you know programming? It's just, it, it doesn't matter. Or I'm making a tier list of programming languages and everyone, holy fucking shit. And it's just like, wh wh why people care? Just learn programming and, and that's it. And I think I finally figured that out because it's a cryptocurrency for people. It's a cryptocurrency. <laughs> right, it's so fucking bizarre to me. It's so funny, sad, fascinating and informative at the same time. It's just like, oh, so, so that's how it works. Oof, okay. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for, for, for the link. So I think this is what we'll need in here. Uh, right, so, and I'm going to copy paste this entire thing. Um, at the same time, I mean, I, I do understand, like, no, no, not really everybody teaches how to do programming. Nobody really teaches programming rather than, than a programming language. And uh, maybe it's my fault that I didn't create some sort of a course, right? So about programming in general and not a specific language. But at the same time, with my experience in making tech content on the internet, I fucking know that nobody's going to watch that. Like, I fucking know that. I can make a course on, like, general programming, programming in general. And I can just describe you how to just not care about specific language, but to actually do programming. And nobody's going to fucking watch that. It's just like... Because it requires effort. Learning actually useful skills requires effort. 
So, I mean, you personally would watch that, right? Uh, so random chatter in the chat, you personally would watch that. When I say nobody will watch it, I, I mean, uh, majority of people will not watch that, right? So, yeah, you, you are in a minority of people who actually want to learn things, and I do really appreciate you. So thank you so much for being you. Uh, but we know that majority of people just feel like, nah, nah, it's, it's not like, they, they don't like, the, 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 like how reality actually works. So, mm -mm. if you sell it like, wow, it's only good programmer, get rich like me, you will sell it. But the problem is I'm not rich. So <laughs> that's, that's the problem. Uh, so the problem is that I'm not rich. Mm -mm -mm. So the, the reason why I'm not rich is that um, as soon as I have enough money to sustain myself, I kind of stop being motivated by money, if you know what I mean. It's just like, uh, as soon as I have, okay, I have a roof over my head, I have something to eat, I have something to drink, okay, I can focus on programming. So that's how it usually goes for me. So as soon as I, okay, so the basic things are done so I can focus on programming. <laughs> so that's how it is for me. Because of that, I can't... Like, I couldn't give a shit, right? So, and for the longest time before I actually started to stream, um, I quit my job. So there, there was a long period before I quit my like office job and started streaming and I did freelancer, freelancing. So what I would generally do, I would just freelance for like short period of time, accumulate a bit of money and then just like don't work for some period of time and just like live off of those money. So, there was an interesting moment in my life where uh, I needed a job. I was running out of money. So, and I couldn't find any freelance job. So, and um, then I found yet again an office job, right, in nearby. And <laughs> that was so fucking funny. Is that uh, there is, before they actually hire you, there is a, how is it called? in English. So there is a period of time, like a probing period, uh, right? So where you're working for them, but if they don't like uh, b background checks, no, it's like, it's not an interview, probation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, uh, so I went through probation and the salary from like, it was, I think, uh, two or three months or so, the salary from this uh, you know, probation period was enough for me for half of a year because I'm a very frugal person. And at the end of the probation, they was uh, they were about to say, "Okay, we're gonna hire you officially. We really like how you performed and stuff like that." And then I look at how much money I made and I say, "Nah, bye." And it's just like in in, in half of a year, I found freelance job. So, <laughs> so this this is the kind of person I am, right? So. <laughs> Uh, so it's just like I, I for some reason if i have everything i just don't give a fuck and it's like <laughs> maybe i'm just weird so maybe i don't do not uh, rule out that um uh, but <laughs> so i'm saying that and just realizing how fucking ridiculous that is it's just <laughs> but that's who i am mm. Biscuit literally was a bus driver and a gut uh, programmer at the same time. Oh, yeah, I heard that. I heard that. But I don't know, like a, being a bus driver sounds like you actually need to do your job. And it's just like, I don't want to do any, any job at all. So, uh, so yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, we have this thing. Uh, let me actually clone this entire stuff. And... Uh, eh, eh. So let me git clone and can do depth uh, one. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So um, usually the thing I like to do, usually the thing I like to do, I just like to evolve uh, this stuff. And so hair mode, there we go. Easy peasy, a lemon squeezy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Whoever posted that in the chat, I forgot who posted that, but thank you. Uh, right. So you have to do expert, right? Because the language was designed by JavaScript developers. Obviously, you have to put expert. Then you do void. And then 
uh, obviously it is equals, right? And <laughs> okay, I mean, fair enough. I press tab, it indents it. I press shift tab, it unindents it. I guess fair enough. And also it uses tabs. Disgusting. Disgusting. Anyway, so FMT, uh, so print LN. And we're going to do hello world. So we've got this thing and I do heresy. Can I just do, I think you have to do build or something, but I mean, I just want to try that. Uh, okay, so there's no, semi yeah, it's it literally designed by JavaScript developers. <laughs> uh, okay, so type def variable is not set. Could not open module FMT. That is bizarre, minor friend. So that probably means that that deferable head is not set. That probably means it didn't install some standard libraries. I, I don't really know because if I take a look at the make file, all right, and what does it have in there? So when you do installation, it just installs it to the yeah, I don't see any problems in that. But I mean, wait a second, this is only... A b I think I didn't finish... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I compiled only bootstrap. I forgot the second step. <laughs> All right, so I mean, it's hard, okay? It, it's hard. I, this is, this. <clears throat> so home, where is the installation? So I forgot the, the third step. Right, I already started compiling uh, the build the driver source code. Okay. <sighs> so we have almost this entire thing built. Uh, so we're not grab git clone uh, depth one depth one. There we go. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Oh my god, that's a way bigger thing. So do you have make files? It doesn't. Oh, it does have a make file. All right. So and uh, let's take a look at the readme. Uh, I suppose you just do make, right? Um, so obtain the same thing. You first have to copy the config, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So copy uh, config uh, Linux. I suppose it is Linux. I just copy it to config MK. And then I'm going to do a make. Let's -a go, my Nefroindu. Let's -a go. Uh, what the fuck is this? <laughs> uh, SC doc not found. Very interesting. So it was trying to compile some SC doc and whatnot, and it couldn't do that. And I wonder where it is. Uh, so what is that? So we probably um, here. Um, yeah, but it didn't create anything in here. So there is a hurry doc and hurry everything. Okay. Um, so maybe. Uh, that, that was weird, honestly. That was really weird. I want to try to run it one more time, uh, right, just to see. Um, so is scdoc something that you have to install, uh, like, system-wide? Probably. So let's actually see. Uh, scdoc. It's probably one of those things. Yeah, it is. Okay, so let's actually go ahead, ahead and install it. Uh, so... All right, it seems to be installing Think. All right, so if I do make one more time, there we go. Easy peasy, a lemon a squeezy. Uh, so um, I suppose the thing we have to do, we probably have to do check. So let's do the check. So that will run the tests. So 375 tasks. Uh, that is very interesting. That is very interesting. Uh, SC doc is also made by Drew Devault. Uh, also, you mean hair is also made by Drew Devault? I, I don't really know. So, who, who made actually like hair? Oh, a lot of passes. I feel good about myself. I feel really good about myself. Uh, hair is made by Drew. Okay, so that, that's interesting. That's pretty cool. Uh, and uh, 
so if we were to install this entire thing how it would even look like uh, all right so let me, let me take a look at the make file and if you do install uh, it just do does install CMD right install CMD um, and install CMD just installs uh, the main pages right it's just the main pages uh, here here a doc and it doesn't install any libraries or anything like that so that's what's weird about it so if i try to okay so let's install it locally and i'm going to do dest dir uh and it's going to be home opt hair right so and let's just go ahead and install it um yeah so it just installs the the executable and nothing else uh right so user local uh, bin hair share main uh, and SRC so okay here is the standard library all right all right all right all right so here is the standard library and I wonder if it's capable of finding the standard library after uh, like like while being in that specific path or do I really have to install it system-wide I have a feeling that I have to install it system-wide so but this some this is something that I can do I think uh, right so I think this is something I can do so anyway, uh, let's go to here. So it's gonna probe here. And uh, so I can just do opt here. I'm gonna use this with this compile, with the compiler, and it's just gonna do, uh -huh. So essentially you have to do the build. You have to do the build, RT module not found. Okay, so you do need to actually do the installation like a system-wide. So we can do install, and I'm gonna just do CU uh, like this. And uh, yeah, so let's quickly do that. All right, so it is done. Uh, and I suppose uh, if I go to user uh, local bin, so here are all of these things. Here, see here, doc, and uh, yeah, so there is just here. Okay, so there is a separately. Okay, that's very interesting. Uh, so uh, are we ready to do this thing? are we ready so what the fuck was it doing exactly could cannot ignore error here tasks what was it doing okay what if i just do this okay so i have to do that uh-huh so you have to so hello world hello world where is the hello world so i'm going to take a look at the home you have to put exclamation mark at the end whatever the fuck that means what is it doing for so long i'm a so what i'm starting to get a little bit disappointed like what the fuck is going on um, so table of content, um, so getting started, so O, all right, so that is understandable, uh, all right, so O, hello, and now it is fine, that is bizarre command line interface, like why? If you didn't provide O file, it was just doing some we Oh, this is because it's a folder and this is what confused it. Holy shit. And Okay. <laughs> so bizarre. <laughs> uh all right so this is hello and this is hello world we can take a look at uh what is this file right so it is executable with debug information by the way with debug information which means that i can do gf2 uh, on this thing and then break on main and just run it and i can't see shice in this miss so it says that um like it's it's done isn't it right so yeah we can do next yeah it, it cannot show anything so this specific module cannot be found or whatever okay so it's not particularly useful and in terms of what it depends on it's not a dynamic executable. It's not a dynamic executable. Holy fuck. And I do appreciate that. I actually do fucking appreciate that. 
absolutely based. So does it use Musil? I don't know. Maybe it just like uses its own like uh, wrapper around Linux syscalls or something like that. So yeah, that's pretty cool. By the way, the, the tabs instead of spaces is also something Drew likes, or is that something that the developers of the extension for Emacs like? Um, so it's just like, uh, I don't know. Anyway, so I would like to maybe create a separate folder because I want to try this stuff one more time and just do uh, hair build hello H A. Okay, that was bizarre. Why it was not working? There is some sort of a weird bug. If you have a folder hair and you just try to do that, it's still. For some reason, this is bizarre, don't you think? Don't you think? Don't you think? Because if I move this thing in here and try to build it in here like that, it says output path here already exists but isn't an executable file. Right, so, but if I move this thing in here and just create an empty thing and do, it's fine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, I also have folder. Ah, I also have folder. But I mean, I didn't have that be have had it before, didn't I? I think, yeah, I can remove it. I can remove it actually. And if I just do that, yeah. So it's kind of weird, isn't it? Um. So we can try to, so maybe, is there a hair? Yeah, there is also nested here in there. Maybe you have to put like a nested hair. So I'm going to create a hair and then another hair, right? So we have two nested hairs, as you can see. Uh, and maybe that's what broke it. No, that's not what broke it. It is what it is, and it isn't what it isn't. Is it node? I think it is. Uh, in any case, we managed to create Hello World, right? So there is also a way to say run, and it runs it, right? So everything is pretty good. Uh, the compilation, uh, the compilation time. Let's take a look at the compilation time. Eh, it's decent. Could have been faster for such a small program, but I mean, it's decent. Uh, if we run hello and check how fast it runs, yeah. So uh, one millisecond is something that I would expect on my machine for Hello World. <laughs> Honestly, maybe even less. So that's basically on par with uh, with C. That's basically on par with C. So if you take a look at the Python, uh, right? So when you do print hello world, uh, how much time does it take to print this shice? Time Python Python three uh, main pi, right? So it's fifty times. 50 times slower, right, 50 times slower. Anyways, so uh, maybe we need to learn about some interesting features of this language. So uh, function and parameters, right? So functions and parameters. Uh, ask name, blah, blah, blah. So interestingly, maybe I would like to take a look at the source code of here, like um, at the modules, All right? So there's SRC here and there's STD. So what kind of modules do we have in here? So we learned about FMT. So we do have FMT and you can do stuff in here. Uh, so really like the extension of here is just like, ha, 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 ha. So do we have more things? Yeah. <laughs> so uh crypto you can mine crypto with this <laughs> i'm joking by the way i know what is crypto um so there's a runtime os uh uuid all of that is boring all of that is boring there's a net uh, so you can do ip tcp so you can write a, like a network application so, but can you create a window? Can you create a window? So, 
Jai, by the way, one of the rare languages where part of the standard library is create a window. And I think John has a pretty good point. Like, why in 2024, in any language, in any standard library of any language, open a window is not a part of the standard library? We had GUI systems with windows for how much? Like, for more than 30 years or something? Like, that should be a thing in the standard library at this point. Because that's what you want to do. Quite often, when you create an application, you want to open a window. Like, duh. Fucking duh. I don't know why this is not a thing. Uh, right, so, and in Jai, it is a thing, by the way. Right, so there's literally a module in, in Jai, create window. And it just creates window in a cross-platform way. In a cross-platform way. Um, right, and it comes with Jai. It comes with Jai. Uh, so there's some tests and all of that is just kind of boring, bruv, kind of boring. How do you link with other libraries, with C libraries and stuff like that? How do you link? Does anybody know? Uh, does documentation know? Memory management, handling errors, uh, types and depth, working with slices, functions and depth, modules. Uh, how do I use libraries though? How do I use libraries? So, is there something like FFI? Um, maybe linking. All right, we're off to a great start. Mm, we're off to a great, a great a start. Not gonna lie, my friend. So this is just hair documentation. So there is a main hair. So there are tutorials, a general. Uh, module tutorial. Okay. Reference documentation. Okay. So maybe we want to have a reference documentation. Okay. So this is the modules that you have. And this is just like, you know, modules. All right. So uh, extended support libraries here, extended support libraries, not in third party tools in here, here, language specifications, installation, here, style, developer resources. Okay. Um, hair json support for hair all right so this is sort of like a separate thing and if you take a look at the source code uh actually we need to take a look at the tree of the source code okay so there's a make file and there is encoding in here so there is a json um and this is entirely written in that um Hair extensions, hairstyles, they got all the parts. <laughs> That's actually funny, yeah, I agree with that. Um, so, third-party tools, JDB, so you can do JDB. If you want to use JDB, you can do that, for grind and stuff like that. How do I link with the C libraries? Does anybody know? Can I link with C libraries, right? So I have a library in C, I want to probably link it. Uh, so there must be something. There must be something. Uh, so general linking. So in the tutorial, there is nothing. In the tutorial, there is nothing. In a standard library, uh, linking, linking, there is nothing. Uh, so maybe I can just Google up. Uh, oh, so yeah, there was a hair build LC. Oh, that's a good one. Okay, so maybe we can work with that, actually. Maybe we can work with that. Um, so where is the hello? And if we take a look at the hair, like, help. Is that something I can do? Or maybe minus H. So, ah! Uh, um, maybe in the build. Aha! So it is literally just like uh, in GCC. I'm going to sneeze, by the way. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm thinking. So I remember seeing something like minus L, but I think I lost it. So here minus LC, but I'm going to put it into the quotes and I'm going to just do something like this. I wonder if Google will find that. Uh, of course, Google will not find that. Uh, here 
programming um, programming language. Google is kind of useless lately. And it's like there was mentioning of oh my god, that's so bad. Show go away. Okay. Uh show like it it cannot find them. Okay, so I lost that thing. Um so the the problem is I can probably link with some stuff, right? So let's actually try to link with uh Raylib and see what we can do uh with Raylib specifically. So it's gonna be Raylib. Uh, ready five so it's somewhere in the build somewhere in the build so yeah here it is so we're gonna do that uh, and I can just go ahead and try to build hello.h and l raylib right will it work um, I actually don't w what do you want exactly w what's the error Ooh. <laughs> like at least give a few words describing what the fuck do you want i see so it doesn't like the order but give a few words jesus oh i'm sorry um like at least explain like what exactly you don't like uh, it's like okay so it linked it together so that's already cool uh that's already cool but the question is like how can i use this kind of thing how can i use this kind of thing so because um, how, right. Um, so there was a tutorial getting started, uh, built editor plugin, hair basic. Uh, all right. So I think I want to make a small break. You know what? I think I want to make a small break, uh, and I want to refill my cup of tea. And after the small break, we're going to try to find how you declare a function so you can use it from the linked library, right? So uh, I think that's kind of important because by itself, the standard library of hair is meh. There's nothing particularly interesting in there, right? So there's nothing really interesting in there. So it's just the standard library. Input, output, math, network. It's like almost like we're in 70s. Have you noticed that like, in all of the even modern languages, the standard library assumes that we are in 70s? That, that's what's weird about all of the languages. Like, why do I assume that you are in 70s? We have fucking web. We have windowing system. We have fucking GPU accelerated shit. It's just like, what? Um... Uh, what do you mean? Have you seen standard libraries of programming languages, my friend? Like, I mean, if you don't understand what, what I mean, you probably never programmed. Just have you seen programming languages? Like, what, what kind of question is that? Anyway, so uh, let's make some break. And um, all right. So on the break, people suggested me this link, uh, right, which is very, very cool. Uh, so essentially, this is how you link with uh, C libraries. So you export malloc. But this is not what we want to do. We want to import it. Uh, yeah, we want to import it. So this is probably how we do that, right? So there is an external function that accepts certain types and we associate it with a certain symbol. Um, and there is an opaque type. So I suppose opaque uh, pointer is just like a void star, right? So that's what it is. So maybe this is the syntax that we have to use. Uh, so, and this is what we can try essentially. But in this case, I want to actually do like init window, right? So I want to do init window. Uh, and in here, so let's actually literally call it init window. But the problem here is that we have to accept two integers right so this is size and size and then a const char star and i'm not sure if that's something that you can just do syntactically in here uh right it's probably not going to work so let, let me actually try that uh let me actually try that and we can even try to like init a uh, window right so we can init window 800 by 600 and here title like definitely this is not how it works <laughs> Definitely, this is not how it works, but we can try that. And uh, what does it say? Uh, right, so you can't just do that. So here you can maybe probably do something like this. Uh, right, unresolvable identifier character. Is there something like U8 maybe? 
uh, right, so this is not how it works. It would be great if there was a section on like FFI with C. Like I'm telling you, if, if there was a section on FFI in C, that would have been kind of great. But maybe we can actually look at the runtime. Uh, right, look at the runtime and maybe find a lot of interesting examples, right? So we can go to OPT. Uh, here, user local, src, uh, rt, so here it is. And we can literally search for the symbol, right, grab or n, and just like find different interesting symbols. Uh, what kind of interesting symbols can we have? Uh, so init main, aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. All right, so this one is cool. So this looks like exactly what I tried to do, I think. Uh, so we export in this as a C. Yeah, 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 I see, I see, I see. So, and I have a feeling that this is exactly what we have to sort of accept, but it didn't really work, right? Maybe because I was trying to do it like that. So if I try to do it, yeah, yeah there, there we go. So it kind of works. But then if I try to do it like this, you cannot pass. Like argument type string is not assignable to parameter point to start. Right. So you need to turn this string into C string. Right. So this is what you need to do. You need to turn it into C string. Yeah, C string. So the question is, how can you do that? Um, so if we take a look at the documentation, so reference documentation, uh, RT. Yeah, it's just like, it's the same as reading the source code, honestly. <laughs> right. C string. So there's something sterlen. Do, do you do you have anything as strlen? So we can even try to do the following thing. I'm gonna grab for strlen because that's where probably. Uh, okay, so there is. Ooh, 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 ooh. So there is a type like type. That is poggers, believe it or not, right? So that is kind of poggers, uh, right? Because you can have types, and there is a classes. Uh huh. So I'm gonna go to hello and I'm gonna use type, but it's kind of weird. So is it going to compile if I just do it like that? Uh -huh. Type C. Is that what you want? Uh, maybe maybe I have to do it like that. Module C not found. That's bizarre, honestly. Wait wait wait. It's type C. Type C. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so and if I try to compile, so that got recognized as the type um so and we have strings so we can do ester okay 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 we can use the length this is perfect this is perfect so two str unsaved to str n all right all right all right all right to str so you can convert from c string to the string of hair but is there some way to do the opposite thing from okay okay we actually figured it out so i can literally do uh from str and apparently apparently i can literally just do char i can literally just do char but here i probably have to do something like types uh, C, right, because that's where it is located, right, so type C, maybe even strings, uh, right, so we'll see how we can figure that out. So, I, and by the way, I know nothing about syntax of hair. I'm seeing this language for the first time. I'm literally guessing it, right? <laughs> so, I'm not sure if it's a good idea generally, but I mean, it, it may work if you, if you just like uh, bang your hand uh, against the wall for long enough. It may actually work. Um, so what I'm thinking is that maybe, uh, do you have char defined anywhere? I wonder, right? Because I'm pretty sure that char is an alias, right? So you can probably have something like char, um, right? And maybe it is more like a type, right? So it's more like a type char. Yeah, there we go. So, 
yeah so what i'm thinking is that uh, if i go here can i do use um where was that uh, so type types c char can i do shit like that uh so by the way what, what the fuck am i doing in here so i'm not supposed to do it like that so it's not uh, particularly useful so now let me try to build ah c module not found so but if i try to do something like this uh-huh so what if i say c holy shit i figured it out holy fuck okay 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 so init window uh 800 by 600 so then c from str hello from hair Now, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> right. I literally brute force this shit. Who needs the community? Guys! I'm fucking telling you, source code is the best documentation. I didn't read any of all these stinky tutorials. I just grabbed the standard library. Just by grabbing standard library, I figured out how to, you know, call this thing. Uh, so thank you so much, static static ZC6 uh, with the message banging my head against the wall usually solves my coding problem after some time as well. Yeah. Yesu, yesu, yesu. Um, so it's more like uh, investigative programming, if, if, if you know what I mean, if that makes any sense. So essentially, uh, I needed to work with C strings so how did i approach that um so i assumed that maybe in the standard library there are some bindings for some uh you know functions from c library and i start grabbing that and that's why i start grabbing uh, str len because if there is anywhere a code that does conversion between hair strings and C strings, it's probably somewhere in the libc bindings and probably with the function strlen. And I found this function and it in fact contained the signature, it contained the type, it contained an example on how to accept, uh, you know, C strings. And I went from there. I actually went from there. Right, so you basically, you still need to have a little bit of experience in software development to pull that off. Right, but once you have that a little bit, you can basically come up with a hypothesis, like where, what to find and what to grab and just grab and find that thing. Right, and then use that as an example and so on and so forth. Uh, right. <clears throat> so now we need to close the window. So, and I suppose closing the window Right. And I suppose you can actually call, uh, like call it differently. <gasps> finally! Fucking finally! Ha ha! Eat that, Raysan! I don't have to follow your style anymore. I don't have to follow that. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother! Okay, <laughs> so... If there is any reason for me to switch to hair, that would be it. That would be a good reason to switch to hair. <laughs> oh, add a module. How can I have a module? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I can do uh, array leap. Finally, holy shit. I've been waiting for that for so long. Uh, oh, yeah, I, I, I could do that. I could do that. But I mean, it's it's uh, using the, the preprocess and stuff like that. But, I mean, yeah. <laughs> so how can I, by the way, do that? That's a good question, actually. Um, so maybe for that, I'll need some 
documentation but maybe not actually maybe not because you have types in there i suppose module is literally like a separate type so let's create ray uh, lib ha ray lib ha and uh, move all these things in there so then i can use ray lib uh, and I wonder if I have to make them pub I probably have to export them, right? Because obviously, as you can see, this language is designed by JavaScript developers, right? Obviously. So you have to do something like export. Uh, finally, finally, good style convention. Good style convention. Uh, so we probably also need to... We can maybe even write some wrappers around all of that stuff. I'm pretty sure. So we can do this kind of thing for you. And obviously, like, let's just do it like that. Um, so I'm going to just put it like this. And let's try to build it. Okay. Role uh, module ray leap is not found. Okay. So let's go ahead and just see where you update the search path. So add library to link your path. Okay, that's understandable. Um, so is there something overwrite name space for the module path? Uh, do I literally have to include raylib? Ha! Huh? No, not like this. Um, that's bizarre. It doesn't even tell me what it doesn't like. Right, it just tells me that it has to be a single, uh, single thing. Uh, has to be a directory, according to the documentation, really. Uh, and can I move it in here then? Uh -huh. Okay. So expected found. Uh, all right. So there were types. But do you have symbol? Okay, so maybe I have to move expert in front in here. So we're just going to fuck around and find out. Yeah, that was it, actually. That was actually it. That is absolutely freaking poggers, I suppose. Right, it has to be like a um, separate folder. And it compiles, as you can see. So uh, I can actually now... Can I run? Yeah, there we go. So that worked correctly. As you can see, we have the log from Rayleap. And one of the things we can do in Rayleap, in fact, we can have a separate symbol, which is like the original style, but then uh, we don't have to export it, right? So we don't have to export it at all. And the thing we can export uh, is going to accept like a proper uh, string height size uh, and here it is going to be title uh, title which is a string uh, so this one by the way they do not return anything i don't know why i said that they return something they do not return anything uh, and in here we can just call to init window width height title c from uh, str like so so, and if I try to rebuild this entire thing, so what do you have? So we're supposed to return, uh, ah, uh, so, uh, void. Okay. So that's what you want, right? Uh, uh -huh. what else? Uh, probably have to explicitly say that they return void. Sure. Okay. So now here I can just provide something like this. And that worked. I wonder if I can see the title. It doesn't log the title, unfortunately, right? So it doesn't log the title. Anyway, so the next thing is going to be uh, symbol. Uh, so how are we gonna call that? How are we gonna call that? Uh, window uh, should close. Should close. Uh, window should close. And it's going to return boolean, I suppose, right? So I suppose this is enough. And then uh, while, shit, four. Okay, so it has opinionated thing on, on loops. 
Oh boy, I love opinionated languages. I love opinionated languages. Okay, so let's see. Uh, here, general language introduction. Maybe there's loops, four loops. Uh -huh. So, yeah, yeah, it is like, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's a ghost style. All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, and I suppose you also have to wrap it in parentheses, ray leap, uh, window should close, window should close. And while we're just doing that, uh, I suppose one of the things we have to constantly do is ray leap. To be fair, I think I understand the point of ray san. Having these prefixes kind of sucks, honestly. <laughs> anyway. uh, so begin drawing, uh, begin drawing, and then end drawing, right? So. Uh, we can have something like that. Uh, so this is begin drawing, and then begin drawing, then uh, end drawing, then end drawing. So in this case, these things are voids. Voids. So really, did I not export those things? Uh huh. Way seriously. No fucking way. You have to put some... I mean, okay, sure. Easy peasy, hello from here, mother flippers! Easy, fucking peasy. You can write games in these shrines. Ray leap speed. <laughs> what? The, this is a, such a cool idea. Take a language that you never programmed before, and try to run ray leap on it as quickly as possible. Feels like C with extra steps. I mean, you have modules. Do you have modules in C? Mm -hmm. Does your little silly C have modules? I don't fucking think so. Dab, dab, dab. Already better than C. Already. So, and I wonder how more other things it actually implements. So that's a very interesting question. Uh, so we can try to maybe do clear background, uh, right? So and start doing some other things. So maybe we could find some cool constructions, right? So error handling. Mm, so const and let defined variables, function and parameters. Uh, all right, nothing particularly interesting, right? I didn't see anything particularly interesting. Um, const and let. Right, so you have const variables, you have let variables, I suppose const are constant, let are, you know, modifiable, mutable, uh, but maybe not. Uh, so, um, this uh, sample, it, it does feel like a JavaScript, so a lot of stuff was actually inspired by JavaScript. Uh, design to illustrate a few common ways to use variables in here with constant let. When declaring a variable, you must provide initial value, initializer such as constant, a variable declared with const cannot be modified later, but you can modify let variables, okay. Uh, right, right, nothing particularly special, nothing interesting. So there are arrays and slices. I know the concept of array and slices, so I didn't think so. Um, may infer length from the context, blah blah blah. Nothing interesting. Memory management, stack allocation, pass by reference, dynamic memory allocations, and defer. So you can just unlock some shice, and you can even work with that in that way. But then, how can you convert that into an array of integers? So that's very interesting. Um, so you have args. So this is just a pointer, right? So, but then if I want to allocate array, mm, so this is how you allocate array. Right, it's just, it will infer the size and how to allocate, okay. So, and then you can do defer to, to delegate. That's already actually kind of cool. That's already better than C. Uh, right, so I can use that instead of C just for the modules and defer. So, one of the things that like C really, really lacks, right, some sort of namespaces. Uh, what the fuck is that alloc? I have no idea, honestly. So, like... The way I usually approach this kind of shit is just like, 
I kind of make a note that there is a syntax like that, and I do not pay much attention to th to the specific and what that means. So obviously, it is some sort of an allocation, and it's some sort of allocation that allocates this thing. Like, what is that? I don't know. Maybe it says that uh, it needs to be initialized with zeros, and it doesn't have the right end, so that means it will just use the size of this thing from the type. Maybe it means something else, but the point is, this is how you allocate arrays. So, the details can be figured out later when I actually try to use all of that, honestly. So, and that's why people quite often, like, uh, criticize me that, oh, you skip documentation so, so fast. But I do that on purpose because I just skip unimportant details. This feels to me like unimportant detail. And it just probably doesn't really matter what that means, honestly. Like, if you think about it. Who fucking cares what that means? That's how you allocate array. End of the story. Move on. Let's actually find something actually interesting. So it's just like all these languages, they, they have opinion on how to provide certain things with a certain syntax. Okay, let them do their thing. Let them cook or whatever. It's just whatever. Um, so that's basically what it is. Like, I don't know what it means either. And it doesn't matter. <laughs> and I don't even care. Like, I don't even care. I've seen so many of these goddamn languages, you won't fucking believe. And all of them are trying to be unique and quirky and weird. We are special. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you are all the same in your attempt to, to look special. I, I know that. Uh, so, handling errors are actually really interesting. So, maybe it has an interesting good take on handling errors. Because uh, I remember, like, like they put a uh, exclamation mark at the end of the print for whatever fucking reason right so it was that maybe it has something to do with errors uh okay so it's just like switch cases all right <laughs> okay so some switch cases and uh, okay so exclamation mark operator uh we, in prior example with operator which causes the program to crash when an error occurs let's explore some more effective ways to deal with errors so program use OS create. This is actually kind of cool. I really like this. Um, so handling errors with match. So essentially, if you don't care about handling an error, you just crash. It would be kind of cool if it had something similar to question mark from Rust, where it just like, uh, you know, short circuits the, the execution of the current uh, procedure and just goes up. So that would be actually kind of cool. Uh, so, on one way of handling the series is with uh, which you already know how to use more elegant ways to use match. A match expression takes, okay, so you either use match or you crash. Just match or crash. All right, all right. Okay, so there is a question. There is a question. Holy fuck. So, is the cumbersome match to enumerate every possible failure to every function to make it easier to deal with errors? Question mark is generally used. The purpose of error is to check for errors and if found, there you go, there you fucking go, thank you very much, okay, so that, you got me interested, mother flipper, there you got me, okay, 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 so, that's like Rust without, exactly, yo, imagine Rust, but without the bullshit, so it's more like Zig than, Zig, also has a fair amount of bullshit trust me i've tried this language so <laughs> uh, so uh, so you that that's that's good i like that i like that i like that i like that so huh all right all right all right all right so um let's maybe clear the screen um, so, does it have any other interesting stuff? So, there is a control flow, never type. So, it probably never quits, right? So, it's probably not interesting. Types and depth, promotion and type inference, casting type assertions, user defined types. Um, it's a little bit interesting, but not that much, honestly. Uh, tagged unions, okay. So, how do you. Okay, so this is a tagged union. That's very cool. Uh, so, what the fuck is that? So, it's more of a, like a collection. Oh, you, you sort of spread it. It's a spread. <laughs> Why there's so many JavaScript references? This is obscene. The amount of JavaScript references is obscene. This is supposed to be like a C-like language. Disgusting. 
Yeah, 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 exactly. This is the ultimate combination of JavaScript plus C plus Rust. By the way, don't get me wrong. I'm actually like it so far, right? So uh, I'm not dissing this language or anything like that. I'm just trying to be entertaining, if you know what I mean, <laughs> right? I'm not against this language so far. I'm not against it. Like, it's just like, okay, all of that makes sense. All of that is reasonable. Okay, okay, okay. Um, okay, so that's cool. So tagged unions. Gro growable slices, dynamic shit. Okay. So growable slices. So this is the slice. Strings for all lines. How do I append shice? Oh, it's just append. Okay. But then I can I free this thing. Okay, so you free... Okay, it's in terms of the memory management, it's like go without garbage collector. But since it has defer, it is easier to manage than C. Right? It is more comfortable than C, but less comfortable than Go, but without garbage collector. Right? So to be fair, if C had defer, memory management in C would have become magnitudes easier. Honestly. Magnitudes easier. It wouldn't be like on the level of having garbage collector, but it would be easier, at least. So, okay, so so far so good. So far so good. So static slice operations, slice assignment, nothing interesting. Functions and depths. Uh, ooh, init f init. It's like um. Aha! Uh -huh, it's a elf stuff, isn't it? Yeah, in elf modules. In elf objects, there is always function init and f init. This is the function is called that module is initialized, and this one is called when module is deinitialized, right? So, yeah. So, okay. I think the first time I saw something like that in Pascal, I think Pascal had something like that. It had the initialization section for a module and deinitialization section of the module. So, all right, all right. Organizing your code in many files. So, all right. I would give it 8 out of 10. Um, I would give it 8 out of 10. All right. So, let's actually continue the example and let's try to clear uh, background. Clear background. Uh, so, here we probably have to define. Uh, define structure and define structure so reference hair tutorial general language introduction uh, how can I have structures eh? struct types and tuples okay so can I define something like I probably have to do expert type uh, caller right so we've got callers um, and uh, oh so you have to Mm -hmm. Type struct and we have to do R. And I wonder if I can just do, yeah, okay, GBA, RGBA, and then like this. How do I construct this thing? I probably can, yeah, okay, so that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. So, uh, in a clear background, we uh, accept the caller. So, here is the caller, and uh, array leap clear background um, so ray leap cola uh, and in here what we can do so yeah we just do r 255 g b a 255 something like this and i wonder if i can just do something like const red if you know what I mean uh, it doesn't work on the selection uh, this emacs extension is kind of mid not gonna lie it is kind of mid so and in here we can just do red uh, No clitoral? Yeah, because you don't need it. You don't really need it. Okay. So 
So do you have hexadecimal uh, literals? So because I know that in Rayleigh, you have a function, a very interesting function called uh, get color. All right. So and this is get uh, color. We can just call it get color. And the color is just an integer, right? So we can do it like that. So then uh, I can do something like raylip get cola uh, and x 808080ff, right? So then I don't have to have a red or anything like that. So it didn't like our uh, type boolean is not possible. So uh, I have to return actually cola. So it's going to be cola structure. Uh, yep, it worked. Does it have transmute though? That's a very interesting question. Um, we could try actually do that. So we're going to have C, U32, right? So we can do something like that. And then I can assign this as a pointer to C. Is that something possible within the language? So let's just do build. Okay, that is in fact possible. How do you do casts? Uh, cast, casting. Uh, so you do as. So then we can do as raylib uh, caller, right? And we actually want to do it like a pointer. So is that something that is uh, expected attacked union type or a nullable pointer? Uh, so it's not that easy to do, right? So maybe I have to just do it like that so that didn't work uh, okay so aha uh -huh. ooh okay so we, you can do as only with uh, tagged unions i suppose yeah Beautiful when you know the tagged union. So I suppose it's not that easy. So maybe it's not allowed. By default cannot be null, in other words. Yeah. Maybe maybe you do type panning through different means. So maybe you just don't do that because it's actually kind of unsafe. It's a very unsafe operation. There is a reason why in Rust it is unsafe. So maybe it's totally fine. That it is not like that. That it is not like that. So uh, let's draw a rectangle, I suppose. Uh, Ray Leap. By the way, can I just import everything from here? Is that something I can do? Um, all right. So we can take a look at the modules. Modules. Um, modules. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's like import. Maybe there is no way to. Is there something like using? Uh, so what, what is yield? Um, to note blocks expression which are related after another. In many languages, this decoration semantic meaning this introduces new compound expression, and it's like yield. So you basically return F from the match. Huh. That's very interesting. So you just check for an error in here. And if there was no error, right, if the type that was returned out of here is size, you just yield that size, otherwise you print an error. That is very interesting. Mm, can you union U32 and the color struct as the expert type? But they're called tagged unions, so that means there is an extra runtime information to distinguish them because there is an is operator. So how is operator knows which type it is at runtime? So I feel like um, I think it's not how it works, right? I don't think it's, it's how it works. Anyways, whatever. Mm -mm. So a known object. So let's do it like that. Uh, 
so let's draw a rectangle draw a rectangle and um we can actually do some interesting stuff can i do background uh -huh. draw a rectangle is going to be zero zero 100 100 and the color is going to be red and we can denote red uh, like this uh, so this is going to be red um, though yeah i think it should be pretty straightforward to draw the rectangle uh, draw rectangle uh -huh. so we can do int int uh i suppose width height and the color like so so that is basically it uh -huh. Enable. okay so you can't do uh non-constant computations for the const i wonder if i can just do let uh-huh initialize it at compile time really you can't do initialize it at compile well i mean it's a runtime value isn't it um argument i const is not assignable to int parameter what is that because of red unknown uh draw rectangle did i draw okay mm -hmm. unknown object red okay so that was fine but w what the fuck is this shit uh, argument am i am i going crazy like why red maybe color red why background works oh holy okay 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 everyone relax everyone relax i know what's the problem u32 yeah everyone relax everything's fine so this is going to be red uh boom yo run there we go here is the rectangle here is the rectangle look at that look at that so now we can try to control this shice somehow uh, so we need to have like a key up and key down or anything like that um so we can do is key pressed symbol uh, is key down uh, and here we have is key down uh, x or oh, maybe just key and it's going to be an integer right i suppose it returns a boolean uh, and in here if um ray leap so i suppose maybe also wrap it like this is key down uh can i do something like you know d and basically keep moving this thing to the right so we'll also have to allocate the um position of this thing so it has to be x uh, do we have float f32 yeah so it's f32 um so and also y uh, f32 so we're going to be using x and y right so x and y in here and if you press d we can do basically x plus uh, some sort of a speed multiplied by get frame time actually ready uh, get frame time so something like this right so we can have something like this so that will allow us to move in a certain direction so you you also have to put semicolon in here um right so is not assignable to binding initializer is not assignable to binding type so you want to have something like this all right so that makes sense so we don't have a get frame time so we can edit that's not a big deal so get frame time get frame frame time there we go uh -huh. and i'm gonna do compile so what else do we have in here uh it's supposed to actually return float what else do we have so can i do as um integer in here as integer
And of course, there is a very specific anal way of converting floats to integers, and it's not obvious, you have to look through the documentation. Ah. That's what I like about learning these new languages. Yeah, so we're trying to be super safe and unusual and just like go find out how you convert float to an integer. <laughs> okay, so um, let me see, let me see. Conversion, conversion, convert. Uh -huh. Casting between. Okay, that's how you do casting. Casting between numeric types allows for Lucy conversions. Okay, Lucy. Juicy Lucy conversion. There we go. I figured it out. Boom. It, di it didn't fucking work. Okay. So that's very interesting. So I suppose this one has to be capitalized. I can only dab with one hand because left hand actually holding D. But now I can dab with two hands. Isn't that epic? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Chat, where are the pogers in the chat? Um, can I use the... Oh, yeah, yeah so that's a, that's a good question. Can I transmute this shit now? Uh, so essentially, uh, I'm going to do uh, C. And this is going to be like this. We can say it's a U32. Uh, then we take a pointer, which is just a pointer to C, but then I say, bruh, array leap cola, array leap cola. Uh, yep, 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 yep. I, I looks like I can transmute this shit, okay. So I'm gonna make it green specifically, right? I'm gonna make it green specifically, and then I'm gonna draw the rectangle. Uh, I'm gonna draw the, can, yeah, you can sh uh, see with this thing how do i dereference uh dereference uh, with the or dot operator oh so there is an auto dereferencing why didn't you okay so it complains actually in here doesn't it okay maybe i'm do I have to wrap all of that shit like this? It can't recognize this stuff. It can't recognize this shit. Uh, expected number, end of the file, so you... yeah. But I wonder... Okay, I have P, and then I can say um, B, P, Ray leap. Wait, 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 yeah, yeah, so it was fine actually. It was fine. Uh alright, so wait. So it still complains. What? What? Okay, so I'm where did I do a fucky wacky? I put some bullshit somewhere and it doesn't show me where I made him. Oh my god, the parser sucks. The parser sucks. I'm telling you, it fucking sucks. It wasted my time. I'm sorry. The language is cool. Parser sucks. It wasted my time. I'm telling you, mate. It fucking wasted my time. All right, so what do we have in here? Um, what do you want from me? So it wants... Yeah. Bruv, bruv, bruv. So, uh, now... Let's try to do that. Ray leap cola. Uh huh. Cola is not a syllable. Okay. Yeah, I can do transmit. Type punning. So you can literally do type punning. So that's that's cool. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So that's how you do type punning. That's pretty pogers. That's pretty pogers. Okay. So how about the rest of the directions? What do you guys think? What do you guys think? So the time has come for more directions. So we're gonna do A, and this one actually moves to the to the left. So I can do. Boom, 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 boom. 
So maybe we can f factor out the speed, uh, speed, violence, momentum, speed, violence, divorce. Uh, so how do you do that? Okay, so speed, uh, and we can do F32. Let's say it's going to be something like this. Uh, yeah, that's much faster. Look at that. Look at that. Scheisse. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, now, I'm going to do W, and W is up, so that means it's going to be like this, and S is going to be just plus. So we are moving in all of the mother flipping directions. We're moving in all of the mother flipping directions, however we fucking want. However we fucking want. Isn't that epic? I think it's pretty freaking epic. Holy fuck. By the way, can I just nuke uh, this shit and just do something like this? Can I do that? Holy fuck, I can. So that means I don't have to do that like that. So it's already better than Go, I'm telling you. Right, in Go you are obligated to have these things. In here you are not obligated to do that. Already better than Go. Already better than Go, I'm telling you, bruv. Bruv, bruv, I'm telling you. So we need to figure out how to get rid of the prefixes. So. Uh, Ray San has a point. Uh, Ray San has a point. How can I just do something like this? Does anybody know? Uh, does anybody know how I can just do that? So it's obviously not going to compile, but... Uh, and I can try to do that, and that doesn't matter. Oh shit, it works! What the fuck? <laughs> okay. <laughs> didn't I try... Th wait, 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 wait. Didn't I try that and it didn't work? I'm, I'm pretty sure I fucking tried that and it didn't work. Okay, whatever. So, <laughs> uh, if I go to remove the prefixes like that. Ah, okay, I see. Happens every time. I wonder if I can put constant here, by the way. Can I put constant here? I can. But I can't put const in here because fuck you. Yeah. I need to be able to that compile time. So, what if I. Well, whatever. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so we can maybe add something interesting. I don't know. Um, can you mark a get color as const? That's a good question. So is there something like const fn? Uh, I, I didn't really see const fn, honestly. Const fn. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, it has closures. I'm pretty sure it does closure uh, lambda. So there is a function pointers at least, right? So there are function pointers. Uh, but is there anonymous? So they're also called anonymous. I didn't see actually, honestly. It feels like maybe there is no anonymous functions. Damn, damn. Looks like all of the functional programmer developers are mad. All five of them, all five of the functional programmers are mad. There is no anonymous function. <laughs> um. Ha! Ray Leap. Ha! Is this better than React? It is better than your mom. Not only React. <laughs> Uh, so <laughs> for how long will we be streaming? Uh, so yeah, I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna call it a day, right? So I'm already streaming for two hours. I'm already streaming for two hours, and I think we checked the, this language deep enough. We probed this language deep enough, and my verdict is that I'm not against of this language. I can program in it. I feel like it's could be better than C. I like this language. 8 out of 10. So this is my verdict. 8 out of 10. After 2 hours of playing with this language, 8 out of 10. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. So yeah. Uh, that's it for today. Thanks everyone who's watching me right now. I really appreciate it. Have a good one. And I see you all on the next recreation programming session with who? A Mr. Azorzin. I love you. Mwah.